All right, hey, here I am back with another Team Yankee video because I'm getting more and more into it. So recently I got my big box Soviet starter set, the new World War III box. Um, I had gotten the complete starter set, which you saw the video of recently. And if you haven't seen that, I'll put an end screen, a uh, little link at the end of the video where you can check that out. Um, talking about, you know, the whole, the new revamped Team Yankee World War III. Great game. Absolutely love it. Play it with both of my sons. They're 6 and 11. We love it so much. And like I said before, I play the big bad Soviet Army because I just love piling tanks upon tanks. Uh, in the new um, the new setup, though, I, I have, you know, I don't know the old days of the resin BRDM2. Um, but, you know, now they have these all plastic models, which people love. And in the Soviet box, you get five of them. And you can set them up as the BRDM2 scouts, like you see this guy right here. You can set them up as SA9s um, for air defense, or you can set them up uh, as AT5 spandrel carriers for anti-tank purposes. And this guy here is painted in Model Master Russian green with a little, you know, modulation going. I try to, I try to vary my army. Like for instance, the BMP3s. These are variations on OD green, but I just to give you know different vehicles a different look. This is the only one I have really completed so far. The thing is, you know, when you're looking at lists, and, and this goes back to my days as a Warhammer player, when you're looking at lists and options, it's hard to tell what you're going to want, you know, at, at any one point in the future. And, you know, I might be playing somebody where I want, I want air defense, you know, um, and I want to be able to take down things. What I what I don't think I personally want, I don't think I need more anti-tank. I, I have a tank-heavy army so far, um, and I would rather fight tanks with other tanks. But what I might want is the ability to send out scouts for spotting for artillery. As a Warhammer player, and as a uh, as an Imperial Guard player, or Astra Milla what, you know, whatever we're calling it today, um, I decided that I needed to find a way to magnetize these guys so that I could set them up for whatever whatever loadout I wanted um, for whatever game I was playing. And it didn't take long to figure that out. The only problem was, we, even with the the magnets that Battlefront themselves sells you, it, it, it's hard to get these things to sit nice and flush and even. Um, you know, they're a little wobbly. The, the magnets don't fit. And here's the one that I have built so far. The magnets don't sit nice and flush in there. Um, so it, it took just a little bit of, of figuring, but I figured I'd, I'd share what I came up with because now I do have perfectly magnetized options for my vehicles. Now, I like I said, I don't use the spandrel option. My guys are going to be either uh, SA9s or they're going to be just the scout option. But you can see the magnetization works perfect for either one. And I'm just going to walk through how I did that real quick. It's, it's not a big mystery. I mean, this is... If you've been playing wargaming for any amount of time, the whole concept of magnetization is as old as, as gaming itself, I think, really. Um, but so we're going to take the upper hull here. We're going to take the, the original BRDM turret because we're going to need that. We're going to grab the pieces for the SA9 battery. And then we'll take the um, top to the AT5 mount. I might have called these SA5s earlier in the video. I'm not sure, but of course I meant AT5s. Now, the one issue you might have to work out is that there's another little add-on. And, you know, you could go without this if you wanted to in the game. If you want model realism, this little guy, if you're doing spandrels, needs to fit... Um, kind of on there you're gonna have to find a way this goes actually it might fit right over the hatch now that I think about it um, so it might not be that much of a problem um, but this fits here this little piece right here fits here so you got to cut off that searchlight and mount this and this of course is the guidance site for the missiles itself that is the only thing I didn't really work out because I, I you know I don't intend to mount this this AT5 um, setup on top of the vehicle. But the magnetization for using it still works. 
the whole the whole thing still works. So what I'm going to do real fast is I have to assemble this. And what I really love about these models that Battlefront puts out is that they are not cheap little tokens. They are they are really little scale models. They are for this the size and the scale that they give you. They are such detailed little representations. Um, of the actual vehicles and of course they can't be as detailed as a as a larger scale model is but for for the size they have to work with they really give you great representations of the vehicles this by the way this little seam in there is something you're gonna have to work with um, lots of ways to fill that easily I used Mr. Surfacer on a toothpick and laid it in there just a couple little uh, swipes from Mr. Surfacer fills it in pretty nicely. Um, so to do this, uh, obviously you're going to need magnets. And Battlefront sells you magnets um, if you want to buy them. I had them sitting here. And they're little. I mean, the magnets that I used. Uh, the problem is Battlefront only sells you one size magnet. There they are. They stuck to the end of my snippers. Battlefront only sells you one size magnet. And it's a five millimeter wide by one millimeter magnet. This is not it. This is another five millimeter by one millimeter magnet that I, I already bought for war hammering stuff. Um, the really interesting thing is that this I bought, this is a great company, uh, Magcraft. You can find them on Amazon. They also have their own website. This is what I've used to magnet to magnetize all of my Warhammer um, stuff for, for all different purposes. Their 1x5 is, a, is slightly larger than the one that Battlefront sells. But even the ones that Battlefront sells, um, when you put it in there, it, if, you, if you can see, it, it just, it's slightly, oops, good thing I have some metal stuff there. It's slightly larger than this, than this lip on top. Um, and that's where the problem is. That's why when you try to magnetize these things sometimes, they're, they're a little wobbly, um, they're a little bit big, they don't, they don't sit nice and flush as they should and that's why we have to do just a little bit of extra work on it another tool that's really going to help you out not absolutely necessary but really helps is just a a round file and these are just diamond file set again on amazon not that expensive great tool for modeling overall um you could use this the entire way if you wanted to you could just keep filing down rounder and rounder with this uh it'll take you a while um, but you could do it. Um, so that's one way to just keep using this file and keep filing a round hole. And actually, it doesn't take all that long, to tell you the truth, but maybe we'll do it that way. Another way that I, that I have done it is to use a hobby knife to, because you're going to have to cut out this entire section. This entire section inside that lip needs to go. Um, we, can, we can use this, though, because this actually... I mean, since we're going. And the goal is, of course, we want to get this, this five millimeter magnet to sit perfectly in there. Um, and this is done, if you're gonna do the file method, absolutely do this before you assemble the vehicle because you won't be able to get the depth you need to get the file all the way in there once it's assembled. Um, you can still cut it out with a hobby knife once it's assembled. What I did on most of them was I cut it out with a hobby knife and then just used the, the circular file around the edges like this just to sort of broaden out the shape and make sure it was the perfect round shape for the magnets. But you can see using the round shape, actually, it's uh, the round file. Not nearly as slow as I thought it was going to be originally. Now, to test the fit, it's very easy to hold this magnet in place here. You just slide it on the tip of your hobby knife, and you can kind of just, just sort of press it. And not quite. Not quite. we got a little ways to go yet. Um, I might actually even go the other way a little bit, just and we'll slide those down, Got a little excess plastic building up, 
from the filing, so I'll just trim that off. Let's see where we're at. Oh, I wanted to jump up there. Almost, almost perfect, so just a little tiny bit more. Where are we at with the magnet size? It's so much easier if the magnet is flat against the blade. Um, almost there, a little bit more. You don't want to do too much because then your magnet's not going to sit in place. And when you can just press the magnet into that hole, you've got just the right size. And you know what, I think I'm gonna give it just Just another little, little poke or two. That should be perfect. Once your magnet is able to just press fit flush into there, you have gone the required depth and you're good to go. So now we need to get some CA glue, super glue, whatever you, whatever you want to call it. And of course we need to take that magnet out. Don't worry about polarity or anything now because it, it really doesn't matter to us yet. So with just a little bit of glue on a toothpick, I'm going to get it all around the edges on the inside. And we're just gonna press that magnet into place and make sure that it is flush with the top of the vehicle and that little lip there. You don't want it sticking up in any one place. You want it nice and flush. Got a perfectly fit magnet in the top. And of course, you can give it a few seconds to dry. For these little guys, these are gonna go inside all of the housings for the weapons here, the different armament options. And you can just stick them right on top and then use the hobby knife very carefully to separate them. And if you do that, you'll always know you've got the correct polarity there. So this one is going to go in first and the upside sticks in to the weapons housing where it's going to go. So again, we'll take a little bit of glue on just the toothpick and put it right there on the magnet. And we'll do this turret first. Now these are three millimeter by half millimeter magnets, these little guys. Um, the If you use another one by five, it'll be it'll be too big to fit inside inside this. It'll and it'll just cause a, a raised oops. It'll cause a raised, you know, turret. It won't sit flush with the roof of the vehicle. And you just give it a little press in there. Now we'll let it dry. And then we'll get our next one. And give me this last little guy. He can sit there. I'm just going to do the same thing. A little dab of glue on the magnet. And move it into the center with the toothpick and just let it dry. The little challenge is going to be getting him into there for the spandrel. Um, just because it's got to be a little bit deeper, but it still gets in there. Our dab of glue. And sort of put it in and then We'll use the toothpick again to dab it in place. Now, it, you know, you've got a little bit of distance between the magnet and the contact magnet on the vehicle, but because, you know, these are rare earth magnets, they're pretty powerful. It'll still work out just fine. It won't really be a problem. 
There you go. You have a flush sitting heavy machine gun turret that you can use as you please. You have a flush sitting anti-aircraft missile launcher that you can use as you please. And you've got a flush sitting AT-5 launcher that you can use as you please. Um, and very simple, very easy to do. Uh, and then you can assemble the rest of your vehicle as, as you would paint it, mark it, do whatever you want. And it's really easy, to, like I said, to switch these out um, for whatever game you're going to play, for whatever mission you're going to use these for. Now, with regards to the polarization of the magnets, unless you do all of them, you know, all of your vehicles kind of in a serial production line to make sure that the polarization is the same, you might end up where you have um, some tops that want to jump off and don't fit, and it might frustrate you. It's not that big a deal, but, um, you know, I, I built each of mine kind of individually one at a time. So in order to make sure that I've, I've got the right tops with all of the right vehicles, I just use a very simple marking scheme. Um, and it might not be historically accurate to Soviet vehicles, but it helps me, you know, figure my stuff out. So I've got the vehicle number on the sides, you know, like standard vehicle markings, and then on the backs of each turret, I just use the smaller decals to put it on there so I know that these belong here, and it's very simple to figure out, and I never uh, make a mistake. You can use whatever whatever marking system works for you. You can use a little dot of paint on the back or something, but um, it, like I said, unless you make sure that the polarization is the same across the board for each and every vehicle, this is, you know, a little marking is just an easy way to help you figure that out and avoid a little frustration. I'm always looking for ways, because, you know, like I said, I just, I don't know whether I'm gonna wanna, you know, you get five of these in the, in the Soviet starter box, and there's no way I, I know, do I want them all to be scouts? Do I want them all to be any aircraft? I just, I know that my personal tactics do not utilize a bunch of very lightly armored anti-tank vehicles. Um, I'd rather, I'd rather spend the points on more tanks that have a chance to actually fight back against against other tanks. But but the method works. So I just thought I'd share that, you know, in case anybody else wanted to see it. Now that we've got all plastic BDRMs um, to replace the, the old resin ones, um, very easy to do, very easy to do. So hope that's useful to somebody. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I'm still working on the other projects that we have in progress, but now I'm gonna finish assembling my fifth BRDM and uh, I've got some painting to do. I have five T-80s and uh, two BMP-2s on the shelf that need to be primed and painted along with these guys. So I'm gonna get to it. So for everybody building along your stuff at home, keep building them, build them well, and I'll be back soon with some more projects.